Yeah, but oh. I'm speaking with the distinguished cinemateur, Jerry Lewis. Speak and you are often quite distinguished. And at other times, you're an absolute fool. I mean, just... A silly simp. That's like, yeah, that's it. Right. Yeah. Say, so you talked earlier about being a target, and it seems like um, nobody has been a, a target of the film critics more than you have. And conversely, <laughs> I had the same... I, I, that's the wrong word. At the same time, had more success, you know, financially and so on, and great following and all that. Did this ever get on your nerves where you finally just thought, if they don't like me here, I'll stop making movies? Sure. Did it? Oh, God, yes. Because you don't seem... You get really upset with that. Yeah. I got to a point where I was, uh, I was accused of wanting to do it all. And uh, that always depressed me and annoyed me because that wasn't the case. People think, well, I'll do it all, quote, end quote. And they do not attach to that that it's eight hours for every hat that you wear. And to put in 20 or 21 hours a day is not because you elect to do that. You do that because you can't find someone who will either do it with you, who you think is equally as competent and or better, but then to sit back and wait until there is someone, uh, you would never function at all. So I learned as much about my craft as I could and tried to do as much as I could to make that totality, the end result, an important thing. Did you learn all you learned it while you were just appearing in movies? Were you constantly watching to see how they were made and watching looking through and the asking viewfinders and all? Yeah, I had a couple of hundred of the best teachers in the world, my crew, yeah. from a boom man to a mixer to a grip to electrician. Cutters, editors. But I mean, before you were ever directing, when you were just appearing. That's what I mean. When you and the other. The minute I finished the scene, I was in one of the departments finding out how it worked and why. Yeah. And uh, one day, in answer to your question, one day I was really going to throw in the towel. I said, I'll just make the funny faces and uh, just give up on uh, caring that much that I'm going to work myself into my grave mm -hmm. and have people then attack me on top of it by not recognizing the reason. And uh, a very dear man, a, a marvelous director, Joe Mankiewicz, who's a good friend, I poured my heart out to him one day and I said, Joe, I don't know what they want from me, but what kind of a criminal am I because I choose to work so hard? And he said, uh, Jerry, I don't particularly care that you write and direct because I write and direct. He said, I think you'll find those that are obsessed by it are those that do one thing and uh, you punctuate the fact that they are single-faceted and they don't like it. Mm -hmm. He said, and they want you to come over to their side. If they can knock you down, then they have one less to be concerned with them. Well, it made a great deal of sense to me. Yeah. It made me feel better, anyhow. And he he never... said, the people who do what you do will not attack you for doing what you do. Mm -hmm. So it's those that either choose not to do what you do or are angry that you do, in fact, do it. Yeah. It made sense to me. At least it, it made me feel better. So. Did you ever dash off a letter to a critic that bugged you? Oh, sure. All the time. Yeah. Yeah. But not when it's, not, not, not when it's a critic that I don't think is a competent. When mm -hmm. it's a competent critic that really blasted me and he made some sense, I write him, thanks for a hell of a thought. I'll examine that next time. Mm -hmm. But when it's a critic who I know was told, you better go there because you have to see this dumb movie. It's either the Three Stooges or this tall Jew. Go, you know. When I know that that's the way he went and he doesn't examine the work, I'm not about to dignify him. Yeah. But I've been blasted by the best, and they've made some very good points, and I've made some very good friends out of about a half a dozen critics. So you have, it is possible to learn something from yeah, criticism when it's if it's a concerned serious. critic. Yeah. You know, I, think, yeah. I think Rex Reed is totally insane, but I think at the same time, he's a marvelous critic because he mm. cares about film. And he examines a man's work, and then when he blasts you, at least you know he took the time to examine it, and he's blasting it based on some substance. Yeah. Who else is good in the writing? Pauline Kael. Yeah. She's never said a good thing about me yet. But a you like her. Dirty old broad. <laughs> <laughs> but she's probably the most qualified critic in the world, because she cares about film and those that are involved in it. I wish I could really rap her, but I can't because she's very, very competent. Mm. She knows what she's talking about. For a dirty old broad. Yeah. <laughs> She'll be crazy about me again. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think that would influence her, do you? Uh, Not her, no. Uh-uh. Yeah. No, she's going to say what she thinks. Yeah. But there's a certain critic in New York, also a female, who has to, I must, of course, keep her nameless, 
who really is an incompetent. An incompetent. Oh, totally incompetent. I mean, she belongs in a banana factory. <laughs> you know, and one day I'm going to peel her. I don't even know what that I means. I don't either, but, but it's a, just forget it. It brings a wonderful image uh, to my head. <laughs> she will attack a man's work because she thinks the personality of the individual is lacking something. And I think that's dirty yes, and unfair. write a separate column about your personality. Right. If you, you want to write a gossip column, do that. But yeah. don't take 18 or 19 months of a man's life and sn snap at it. What are you talking about? I'm trying to think. In New York? Yeah. Well, you didn't say in New York, did you? Or did I you? might have said in New York. Oh. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll be right back. We'll be right back. A thirsty person get a glass <clears throat> or something? <clears throat> what the hell with the glass? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> Brown shoes, you deserve it. Right. You can learn a great deal about a person by the way they take a drink of water, too. You can, <laughs> you can learn a lot about how they dress, what they like thinking. Brown shoes? Is that what Jay Press sends you? Well, it's uh, someone else actually sends these shoes over. I don't know where they come from. I just They're very smart. They just doll me up backstage and shove me out here. I, I, I really don't... No, I'm a pig in real life. But they... You're sitting with a Jew, you know that, don't you? <laughs> I'll talk to you, but I won't touch you. <laughs> <laughs> these are your people. I, uh... I don't mean in that sense, necessarily. People of all persuasions I'd like and to know what sense like you like meant you. that in, Dick. <laughs> Let's find out. They seem so fond of you when you came out here. And still well, that, do, I that mean. That doesn't have anything to do with anything. Let's let them talk to you, uh, people in the audience. I mean, there must be things about you that I wouldn't think to ask that they might or... Oh, I or, think that's super. Uh, that's terrific. Like that. There's some nice-looking people yeah. out there. We don't often make this uh, offer. Why don't we move right down here into the uh, apron of the... All as right. we call it, the... <laughs> Apron of the stick. MC, does any, would anyone like to ask Mr. Lewis anything? This is a rare press conference. Maybe you have some house lights so we can actually see the people. Uh, oh, we'll get a picture of you all later. The, the man with the, near there, yes, seems to. Whatever happened to uh, Mr. Martin? <laughs> oh. He married Sid Charisse. <laughs> Sorry, I'm very young. Who is Mr. Martin? Tony. Yes, sir. Uh, when was the first time you ever appeared on stage? First time you ever appeared on stage? Uh, 41 see, years I was ago. about... Uh... No, he was talking to me, Dick. <laughs> I was five years old. 41? Four, just 41 years ago. Do you know there isn't a line in your face? Do you have any kind of treatments or anything? You... Not yet. Yeah, it's amazing. You're really... Yes, sir. Preparation H is very helpful. I don't know... <laughs> I've tried that. on a daytime quiz program. You were dressed as a bellboy with lots of luggage. Do you remember what year that was? Yeah, that was 1961. Was it? Yes. It's 11 yes. years ago. Great. I'll be a son Great. of a gun. Why haven't you called? <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. It would, uh, yes, there's a lady in a purple uh, dress. How old are your children and what are they doing? <laughs> How old are children? This show isn't here. long enough for me to list them all. They're 27, 23, 17, 15, 13, and 8, and they're very happily involved in being loved at home. Yes, ma'am. Yes, what is your birth sign? Do you believe in astrology? I, I'm sorry, what is your birth sign? Yes, and does you believe in astrology? Yeah. Do I believe in astrology? Yeah. No, no, I don't. I'm sorry. And your birth sign? Huh? Your birth sign. Pisces, fish. Pisces. Going, it's ACDC. 